Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. Now I cheated myself to this beautiful hellebore with some Christmas money so I'll be planting that out today. I'll also be dividing and planting out the rhubarb from my dad's plot and I got a lovely new frog house from Santa so I'll be putting that in place as well. So Christmas is over um, and I really hope you all had a fantastic time. Um, I for one was thoroughly spoilt. I got a dehydrator which is what I've wanted for a while now. Um, I just can't wait to start using it next year. Obviously you can dry fruit and vegetables and herbs and you can make crisps and fruit leathers. So um, I'm really looking forward to using it next year. It's going to be very handy I think. Hopefully I'll get a big glut of crops next year so I can experiment with the dehydrator but I'm, I'm really looking forward to using that and um, I got a new flask which I just love I got a toad house uh, so I'll be putting that by the pond later I got a few other bits and bobs um, but I also got some money so I treated myself to a hellebore now I saw these um, at the beginning of the year when I visited Mottisfont Abbey. Uh, they had so many hellebores and they were just so beautiful. Um, so ever since I've seen them in Mottisfont, I've wanted one. Uh, so we popped to the garden centre yesterday and had a little bit of Christmas money. So I treated myself to one. Um, and this variety is called Merlin and they are a creamy coloured flower but they turn rosy pinky colour when they mature um, and oh it's just gonna look beautiful so I'll be putting that in my new flower bed but I need to clear a little bit of space because there's still some annuals there which are obviously died back now uh, they need to be cleared um, it just needs a little bit of weeding uh, but that will be going in there now the common names of hellebores are Christmas robes um, and they flower from Christmas time to early spring which I think is one of the things I love most about them because I mean there's no flowers around now um, actually there's one um, calendula which, have, which has bloomed um, which is crazy because it's the 28th of December today <laughs> it's so mild um, so the hellebore will bring a little bit of prettiness <laughs> to, uh, to the plot in the winter now this one grows to about 40 centimetres in height and about 60 centimetres in spread, um, which is quite, quite big. But um, the good thing about the hellebores is that they are hardy, herbaceous perennial and they're evergreen. So there won't ever be an empty gap there, which is just perfect. They are the ideal <laughs> flower. Uh, so yes, I will be putting that in today. The the whole point of this trip up the allotment today is to uh, to sort the the new flower bed out because the hellebore will be going in there. I'll also be putting some rhubarb in there, which was left over from my dad's plot. Um, so yeah, the main focus is going to be that plot, that area there, because I am heading off to Wales <laughs> tomorrow for the new year, which I'm really excited about. But obviously, because I got this hellebore yesterday. I wanted to get up here and plant it out and get the rhubarb crown in because now is the ideal time to do it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do all that before I went away. So um, the first things first, I'm going to get that hellebore in, but um, I need to clear a little bit of space first. So 
So I have had a good look at my plan um, and even though I haven't decided on the exact flowers which I'll be growing next year, I'm in this area, I decided to put the hellebore here because I roughly know that I want the tallest plants at the back um, and then they get shorter and smaller as they get nearer the front. And I know that this area here is going to be mainly tall plants. There's obviously a globe artichoke behind me. Um, there's like things like verbena and euphorbia um, and oxide daisies dotted around still. Um, but I think this is, is going to be a nice space for the hellebore. There's enough room at the back to put like a hollyhock or something tall there. Um, and then there's enough room at the front to put something shorter. Um, but no, this is perfect. So I've just dug a hole big enough for the pot. Now the variety which I've chosen is called Merlin. Um, and it grows to about 40 centimetres in height and about 60 centimetres in spread. So it, it grows fairly big. But like I said, it's a hardy herbaceous perennial and it's evergreen. So it's not going to leave a huge gap in the border um, like a few of the annuals will next year. Now these flowers are beautiful creamy colour and they will return a beautiful rosy pinky colour as they mature. So they flower from January to about early spring and the common name is called Christmas Rose because a few varieties will come out in time for Christmas. Now I've dug a hole big enough for the pot. They like well drained soil so if you do have very waterlogged soil then I would put a bit of potting grit in so I'll be putting a bit of the potting grit just into the bottom of the hole just so it isn't waterlogged. Now they are very easy to look after. The only thing I would suggest to do is to remove any of the old and dead leaves um, when the blooms start to appear, when the buds appear. Um, that will just allow the flowers to get pollinated um, and it will obviously reduce any risk of, of getting any diseases on the leaves. Now you can actually propagate hellebores um, the same way as you would do rhubarb by dividing the clump. You just need to make sure that they are divided into, into reasonable clumps with at least one growth point on each clump. Um, but I won't be doing that now because it's still quite small. Um, what I might do in the future when it grows a bit bigger is divide it because um, I'm sure there will be room at home, if not on the allotment, for more hellebores because they are beautiful. So I'm going to get this in. Now, first of all, like I said, if you do get waterlogged soil, it's best to put some grit in. So I've just got this potting grit here. So I'll put that into the bottom of the hole. Now I've also got some compost here from over my dad's plot. So I'll put some of that in as well on top of the grit. And then it's time to put the hellebore in. Let's take that out. It's very pot bound, so I'll just loosen it up a little bit because I don't want to damage the roots. Very pot bound. I'm glad that I decided to get this in before I went off to Wales. So I'm just going to lightly loosen some of the roots very, very gently. And that is perfect. So I'll just back through the hole. Give it a light push down. 
Now we are actually forecast for some rain tonight and the soil is very, very damp. We've had a lot of rain these past weeks, but um, I don't know if you can even see it now. That is one job done. So hopefully that will grow to a nice size. I might leave that label there just so I know what it is. And hopefully we get a few flowers this year from there. So, when my dad was sorting out his new raised rhubarb bed, he found out that he had a few crowns too many. So he's left one for me, which is just perfect because he knew that I wanted to put one into my new flower patch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide this crown because there's, there's about four growing points on there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it into two just because I want two rhubarb plants in my flower patch now. So it's best to divide them from autumn uh, and between spring. So it's December now, which is just perfect. I'm gonna do this on the grass. Now, all you need to do is get a spade and divide the rhubarb. Now, you do need to make sure that each new clump has at least one growing point on there. So this one actually has about four, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle there. Now it's best to divide your rhubarb once every five years, um, especially when the rhubarb becomes weak or overcrowded. So let's just divide this here. Now that is absolutely perfect. So there's two growing points on this clump and there are two growing points on this clump. Now obviously if I wanted four, then I could easily divide these in half again. But um, I think these are going to be perfect. So let's go and get them in. So the rhubarbs will be going here. Now the original plan was to get a compost bin, just a small one because I don't have one on my plot. I always go over and use my dad, so I thought I might as well get my own one. Um, so that was going to go here, like at the end of the trough, because I won't really need to be going to the far end of the trough much. And because I can reach it from here, I was going to put the compost bin, bin here. But obviously I don't have a compost bin yet. And I don't really know when I'll be getting one. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to work around measurements in my head of what the compost bin will, will be. Um, and there's also an, an allium where the compost bin will go. But obviously the thing about this bed is that there's going to be a lot of times when I'm going to be chopping and changing things and moving things. Um, and the rhubarb will be fine to move. Um, but the ideal time to plant it out is November, December. So let's just put the clump down there. So I was going to put one about here and then one about a metre away. So just about there in front of the verbena. So obviously they need to be a metre apart and if you're putting them in rows, then the, the rows need to be one to two metres apart. So I'm going to dig. Actually, I'll do the other one first. That makes sense. I'm trying not to step on the uh, the wildflower mix that I put down a couple of months ago, which is growing really well. So you need to dig a huge hole. Big enough for the roots of the rhubarb. Now the bits that I actually cut aren't 
that big so obviously you dig the hole to the size of the rhubarb which you have now I'll be putting a bit of compost into the bottom of the hole just to give it a little bit of help in hand there. Now the rhubarb needs to be planted so that the growing points or the tips are on the top so there's two right here. Now they need to be sitting at soil level or just below um, or if you have very waterlogged soil um, then you can plant the tips just above soil level just so they don't rot so i have dug the hole too deep so that's about right there i'll just put a bit more compost in So the growing tips need to be at the top and then just backfill it. So there's still one tip there. I can just see it. So I will just slightly cover that. So that is one. So I'll do the next one here. So it's about a meter apart. Now, if you find that you divide your rhubarb but you don't have time to put it out straight away, then you can wrap it in a damp sack material um, until you can actually get it out but it is always best to, uh, to do it straight away, obviously. So I won't do this one as deep. <laughs> A bit of compost in the bottom. Now it's time to give the frogs their new home. I mean, I actually haven't seen any frogs for, for a good few months now, um, but I'm hoping that they're all at the bottom hibernating or they're all somewhere nice and damp on ground. Um, but I, I really am hoping for some frog spawn next year. It will would, it would just, it will make my year, I think, just to see some frog spawn. And there's more than enough frogs there now. Um, in one go I counted uh, nine, nine heads in the water, so there's more than enough frogs to create some frog spawn, <laughs> hopefully anyway, um, but no, that would be really nice. So um, I got them a new house, I got it for Christmas, but it's actually also available on our shop, lavenderandleaks.co.uk. Um, I just, <laughs> I think it's so cute. And it's green so it blends in with all the shrubbery as well it actually says toad house on the top but um i've never seen a toad here so uh, we will just call it a frog house for the frog's sake and it has um toads of frogs around the edge and jumping over the doorway as well so um, i'm going to put this um just in front of the ramp um, and by the karoo evergreen there um, and hopefully they'll like it. 
I really like it so that's one thing <laughs> um, but yeah I'm, I'm I am hoping that this area here will be more productive next year it wasn't I mean it wasn't a really good year overall for me but um, I wasn't happy with the pond area as much as I was last year uh, so hopefully over the next few weeks I'm gonna sit down and plan and order seeds and and yeah hopefully next year this area will look a bit better but um, for now the frogs are sorted and, um, and I've got the rhubarb in which is great because that's been on the job list for a good few months the rhubarb's in, the hellebores in um, so I can go off to Wales tomorrow um, knowing that that I've done the things on my list <laughs> um, so yeah I'm spending the new year in Wales and I can't wait so so I'm happy, the frogs are happy um, and I just want to wish everyone a wonderful new year um, um, thank you for watching and I will see you all in 2016